You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Maybe another element to this rivalry game. It is a long walk for the visitors to get inside Wallace Wade Stadium. And it's a great rivalry in college football as Larry Fedora gets his team ready. The 17th ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina on the road to take on the Duke Blue Devils. And hi, everybody. Dave Fleming alongside Jesse Palmer. Happy to have you with us on this Thursday night. Look, Duke is winless in the ACC. They feel like they're a much better team than their record would indicate. Carolina, on the other hand, a real factor in the Coastal. They do need a little help. They have a great chance still, though, playing in the ACC championship game. A lot of that is because of their offense and specifically their quarterback. Yeah, Mr. Trubisky, first-year starter, and he's been sensational this year, very under the radar. And when you watch them on film, he's big time. He's six foot three, 225 pounds, very athletic for a guy his size, very accurate throwing the football at all three levels of the defense. But to me, what makes him very special is his football IQ. He does a lot of things mentally on the field that helps this offense be so efficient. One, he's excellent with his progressions. In this offense, they have a lot of full field reads in the passing game. So on this example, he's starting to his left, receiver covered down the boundary. Come back to the slot, receiver covered on the in route. Now there's a receiver wide open down the right sideline. Bug Howard, he makes the accurate throw. He also does a good job with his eyes moving safeties and getting guys open. Here he's eyeballing the slot receiver, trying to keep that safety on the half. That's going to open up Bug Howard down the sideline for another explosive play in the passing game and the accurate throw downfield hitting his receiver right in the face mask. You know, the ACC is a quarterback heavy league. You talk about guys like Lamar Jackson and Sean Watson, these Heisman candidates. Mitch Trubisky has been so good in his own right under the radar. He's been so good, in fact, that he stands a really good chance at maybe being the first quarterback selected in this year's upcoming NFL draft. That's how good he's been. At the beginning of the year, there would have been nobody, and I mean nobody, who would have thought that would have been possible. So a credit to him for playing at such a high level. And the Tar Heels make that long walk from the visiting locker room past one of the practice fields. Meanwhile, the Blue Devils, a little shorter trip themselves to get out onto the field at Wallace Wade. And it is a pretty cool scene, that tunnel in a stadium that is almost like it's brand new it's beautiful now and they play with the stadium lights we should have a real good crowd for this rivalry game even the blue devil horns in the student section 27 duke seniors 27 that's a big number for their senior night this is duke's final home game of the year Both teams five and one. Tech has that tiebreaker advantage, which is looming so large right now because of the head-to-head -head win in the midst of a hurricane, Hurricane Matthew. But the Hokies got the win in Chapel Hill. Meanwhile, Duke 0 and five. That doesn't tell the full story. The Blue Devils have been a better team in conference play than that record. They gave Louisville a scare on the road. They played Tech, Virginia Tech. That is very tough here at home. Now trying to take down their rivals, the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Rival again. These are always so much fun, no matter where we are, what conference we're in, what stadium we're in. Victory Bell on the line, a lot of intensity expected tonight. Uh, both coaches talking a lot about special teams in this rivalry, particularly. Special teams has been a determining factor a lot in the last few years. Carolina won the toss, deferred, so touchback. Duke will have the ball first, and they're. Quarterback Daniel Jones takes the field. Yeah, they're starting quarterback Thomas Sir hurt his Achilles back in August, so it's been the freshman Daniel Jones, his show all season long. He's a dual threat quarterback, which is strange considering he's six foot five, extremely athletic for a big guy. You're going to see him tonight on zone reads using the speed. He's really good from the pocket. I think that helps him be very accurate on the short to intermediate throws. But no doubt about it, he's going to have to play big here tonight. It's been a game changer for their offense these last few weeks. They've kind of unleashed that quarterback run game with Jones. And their offense has been a lot better because of it from the shotgun and a play fake with some misdirection He's just gonna pitch it to the tight end who drops it just down down drop by the senior Eric Schneider and Jesse mentioned it Thomas Sirk who did go through the senior ceremonies before the game well, We don't know yet whether he's gonna be granted a sixth year of eligibility and come back to this Duke program but a very accomplished player, a guy they were kind of building the offense around and has not played this year. It's been a big disappointment. 
So instead, the redshirt freshman who's got lots of talent. Jesse's going to talk about the things that have made him so impressive, particularly lately. That ball got deflected. It was caught. And a completion out for a five-yard gain to Schneider to set up third down. Yeah, Duke's got three really good tight ends in this game. Schneider, number 88, number 80, Daniel Helm. Copenhaver number 81 and they like to use them in different packages the last couple weeks now They've been big answers especially on third down and right now. They got the six foot seven Schneider lined up up top in the slot Third and five for the Blue Devils and that throw across the middle delivered perfectly and right to the line That should be a Duke first down. It's Chris Taylor with the catch One of the advantages for Daniel Jones being six foot five is he can stand tall in the pocket with that height he can see the field. So you've got a lot of receivers running these crossing patterns right behind the offensive line and defensive line. Oftentimes that's hard for shorter quarterbacks to kind of manipulate those throws. Not a problem for Jones and a nice accurate throw there on third down. Sean Wilson is the tailback. Jalay Duncan has played most of the years as starting tailback. He's hurt and out. The Devils have had a lot of injuries. That has contributed to their down year. Wilson got the carry 0 and 5 in the ACC Coastal that has been even with the injuries that's been disappointing Yeah, it really has and it just I think speaks to where David Cutcliffe has brought this program first time since 2012 They've had six losses and people are asking what's wrong with the blue Duke, uh, blue, uh, Duke blue Devils Just to consider how far he's taken this team, but still have a chance to reach a bowl game and That's why I expect them to be scratching and clawing here tonight those two tight ends lined up interesting formation in the backfield. Carolina's run defense was there, though, and ready for Sean Wilson. Cole Holcomb led the way, the linebacker with the tackle. Now, Duke has not been a great pass-protecting offensive line, so on these obvious passing situations, third downs, they're going to have to do a good job. North Carolina's, they've got some dudes up front. Nas Jones, defensive tackle, Malik Carney, number 53, coming off the edge. These guys can supply pressure into the backfield. It's going to be very important this offensive line in these empty sets like you're seeing right here. Give Jones some time to work through his progressions. Carolina's defense trying to communicate with each other as Duke got lined up. Empty backfield and it looks like a designed quarterback run with nowhere to go. And it is Nas Jones with the tackle. It's fourth down. He's been really impressive. He's a problem on this defensive line because he's so long. He's six foot five, 310 pounds with those long arms. He's able to shed these blocks inside. Just hard for guys to get hands on. I'm sorry, he was coming from the left side there, working against the left guard. Just able to push off, get in the backfield, penetrate. It's going to be an issue trying to run the football inside tonight. We'll see if Duke can limit the return game of Ryan Switzer. A short punt that's going to bounce and take a Carolina bounce. So it'll be down by the Blue Devils right near the 30 yard line. As the Tar Heels, 17th ranked team in the country, 7 and 2. And the Carolina season summary, you know, the opener sometimes you just can't predict. New starting quarterback. If those two teams played today, I think Carolina beats Georgia, but they lost to the Bulldogs. They had the very dramatic game winning field goal on the road in Tallahassee. The loss in the horrible conditions against Virginia Tech, which is such a big game right now. That's their only ACC loss. It's another excellent year for Larry Fedora. Trubisky will throw a screen. Elijah Hood, the tailback, makes one man miss and then gets gang tackled after a gain of four. There's a lot to like about Mitch Trubisky, and he brings a lot of different skill sets to this offense. We talked about his athleticism. You're going to see him in designed runs for a guy as big as he is, but he's extremely accurate in all three levels of the field. And this is not an offense that dinks and dunks. They push the ball deep down the field. You see the decision making 19 touchdowns versus only two picks. They will often go very high tempo, one of the fastest-paced offenses in the country when things are going well. Hood, who is healthy and fresh and running hard, and when he is, he's a star well, for he's, Carolina. He's been a different-looking running back here recently. Larry Fedora told me he was probably 60% between the first game against Georgia and their game against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech was the healthiest he's looked, and right now he's making this offense so much more explosive. Very quick snap on third and four. Trubisky with all kinds of time and nowhere to go with the ball. Will he try to run for it? He will, and Trubisky is going to get there. That little inside move, and he gets the first down. And there's the athleticism you see from this quarterback. When things aren't open downfield, he can avoid the negative play 
and turn it into a positive. That was a great job in coverage by Duke's defense, blanketing everyone, but Trubisky with the wheels able to move the chains. Seven yard run for the first down gain. After the play fake, into coverage, and a nice catch by Ryan Switzer. This tempo from UNC is very fast, and it's going to affect what Duke does on defense. Duke is a defense that likes to blitz a lot, but they may not be able to dial up as many blitzes as they like because of how fast Trubisky snaps the ball. They might not be able to get the play called in. They call that an 18-yard gain for Switzer, who is their leading receiver, and has been a big playmaker for a lot of years in Chapel Hill. Senior number three on the right side of the formation on first down. Across the middle, incomplete, trying to get it to Switzer again. Well, they put up a lot of numbers. Some of it is tempo, some of it is just how good they are. Yeah, they're extremely talented at the skill positions. Larry Fedora has a wealth of talent at quarterback, at running back. We've talked about Elijah Hood. You're going to see T.J. Logan get involved. And their receivers are about as good as a group, I think, as you'll find in the ACC. Second down, they're going to pitch it, almost like a jet sweep there for a first down and more. Down the right sideline and finally out of bounds, Thomas Jackson, the wide receiver. First down, Carolina. Yeah, Thomas Jackson has kind of been the changeup on offense. He's a bit of a red zone specialist and a guy they bring in situationally for jet sweeps, quick screens outside, and another explosive wide receiver they have. And that does get counted as a pass completion, so Trubisky gets credit for the yardage there. One thing for Duke's defense, when you're playing against North Carolina, you're going to give up a lot of yards. So that's a statistic that I don't think you need to pay attention to tonight. The key statistics for Duke, you got to create takeaways, steal possessions. And two, you've got to be great in the red zone. Force North Carolina to kick field goals, not allow touchdowns. Takeaways and red zone defense, I think, are the two keys for Duke's D tonight. I think it's a good point. You're not going to just totally shut down Carolina's offense. You're not. Second and nine, Trubisky toward the end zone and caught touchdown. That is Thomas Jackson and the Tar Heels strike first. We talked about the red zone specialist, Thomas Jackson, and here he is lined up in the slot. We just saw him on the jet sweep a few moments ago. Mr. Trubisky had a matchup he liked outside. The quickness of number 48 in the slot. He's working against the nickel safety Corbin McCarthy. A nice job putting his foot in the ground, getting separation wide open and more accuracy deep down the field for Mitch Trubisky. We've seen that all season. Thomas Jackson, the former walk-on from Charlotte Country Day, who has not only earned a scholarship, but has turned himself into a very good player for North Carolina. Nick Weiler, a powerful place kicker, lines up for the extra point. The hero in Tallahassee, a kick that will always be remembered in North Carolina history. This one a little more routine. It's good. And the Tar Heels take the early lead of this rivalry game. Mitch Trubisky, we told you how well he's been playing. And on that first drive, Jesse, he looked like one of the best in the country. Yeah, no doubt about it. Doing a nice job working through his progressions, playing fast, playing on time. The offense is up tempo. North Carolina up 7-0. Veterans Day approaching. Duke has done a nice job to try to honor those folks themselves here inside Wallace Wade Stadium. The Blue Devils and the Tar Heels, great rivalry in college sports and a very quick start for North Carolina. 7-0, Tar Heels score first, and now Duke will get the ball for the second time. Sean Wilson is a dangerous kick returner, has a chance for a return here. He's got great speed. Wilson with a nice move and good field position for the Blue Devils. Mentioned how the injuries have impacted this Duke football team this year. The captains at the start of the year, there were four of them. And maybe the lesson from that graphic is AJ Wolf, be careful tonight. Yeah, and well, these aren't just leaders that they lost for the season. These are impact players. You're talking about a starting quarterback that was monumental in the running game. Jalate Duncan, an outstanding combination of size and speed in the running game. And Devon Edwards, arguably maybe their most versatile player, an All-American, one of the best kick returners in the country, and a leader on D. And off on first down, Sean Wilson, who has done a good job stepping up with Duncan hurting. Wilson's run the ball well. Yeah, he's not the biggest running back in the country. 5'9", 180, but he's extremely quick, and he has a burst. And for a little guy, he's not afraid to run between the tackles and try and find a crease. Well, he's been doing a lot of work these last few weeks. A handoff, straight ahead running inside the 40 to the 39. That's Joseph Ajibi. 
David Cutcliffe has totally turned around this Duke program. It, hard to describe the depths to which this program sunk before he took over. No bowl games in the previous 17 years, 18 conference wins in the previous 18 years. He's completely flipped the script, brought a different expectation level here. Third and five, maybe four down territory. That throw is knocked down incomplete, trying to get it to T.J. Ramming, M.J. Stewart with the coverage. You know, and I wonder because of how explosive UNC is on offense if David Cutcliffe and Duke aren't going to start going for these fourth downs when they get into plus territory. Now it's early in the game. You want to punt, play field position, give your defense another chance, but UNC is so explosive and when they have this type of field position, I expect in the future for David Cutcliffe in a 3-6 and six team to go for it, especially when you're kicking to a guy like Ryan Switzer who's returned seven punts for scores in his career. Yeah, I thought they were going to go for it. That one will be downed inside the five. Well executed by Danny Sturt, the senior punter. So Carolina takes over inside their own five yard line. Well, the defensive backfield for Carolina, hard to believe they haven't had an interception, not one all year, but they played good defense and they did right there. Well, North Carolina has been in possession of Victory Bell in this rivalry between Duke and Carolina. So today, made the drive from Chapel Hill to Durham. It's on the sideline. <laughs> Victory Bell has been the center of a lot of controversy this week, and it has been amazing because of a spray paint incident the last time this game was played here where Carolina got filled for some damage done in the locker room and they decided maybe are we going to take away the tradition of spray painting the victory bell the players hated it and uh, I guess the end result is tonight whoever wins is going to break out the Kansas spray paint Elijah Hood off to the races and the big guy who can move with a nice gain on first down and let's go downstairs to Laura Rutledge. Dave, Duke's D-line coach Ben Albert telling his guys you can't allow Mitch Trubisky that much time, saying we can't let him run. Also telling them, Jesse, they have to be aware of the tempo, saying I told you guys they were going to go fast. You have to be ready for it. Yeah, Laura, they blitzed on the very first play of the game, haven't blitzed since. Another carry for Hood. And it's just this offense, as good as it's been, with him running like this, I mean, it's hard to figure how you stop North Carolina. He's a special combination of size, power, and speed. At six feet tall, 230 pounds, he's got the ability to move the pile and make guys miss and break tackles between, between the tackles, but you just saw earlier on the drive, he could bounce it outside with great speed. Larry Fedora told me they were those GPS tracking systems in practice. He was going 21 miles an hour. For a guy that's 230 pounds, not normal. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Already 35 rushing yards for him. He's out for this play. Trubisky downfield into coverage. It is caught right along the sideline and inbounds a completion. There's an example of Mitch Trubisky getting through his progressions. He wanted to start that to the left side, wasn't open, worked back to Bug Howard on the boundary at six foot five, 220 pounds. He just boxes out the defender. That was Brian Fields. You see, he catches the ball. Looks like he gets two feet down. An advantage of having big physical receivers outside. And that is Bug Howard for sure. 6'5", 220. A little swing pass on first down to the tight end, Brandon Fritz, who's finally healthy. Another weapon for North Carolina. He's been banged up. He was pretty good receiving tight end last year. They're starting to get him involved in the offense. Well, UNC decides to substitute here, which gives Duke an opportunity to substitute. They did not want to. They're leaving their base defense on the field. But again, not a lot of blitz looks from a Duke defense that's used to adding pressure with guys from the second level. TJ Logan, who's a talented senior in the backfield, and he shuffles alongside Trubisky and gets the carry. TJ Logan with some explosive speed, close to the first down. He's a nice compliment, Dave. He's sort of the switch up. He's 5'10", 190, as you mentioned, for Larry Fedora that has that speed to run outside. They like to get him involved in the pass game as well. And they can leave him on the field on third down because he, he can do it all. He can block, run, and catch. Keep talking about the explosive playmakers that UNC has. Elijah Hood on the sidelines, getting some wind. But they are stocked and loaded everywhere. Carolina's doing whatever they want on offense right now. On first down, Elijah Hood making do defensive players miss again and has to do that to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, this needs to be bend, don't break time again for this Duke defense. Remember, with all the playmakers North Carolina has, they're going to make plays. When you get down here in the red zone, you've got to bow up with your back against the wall and force field goals. The first trip in, they allowed a touchdown. Got to do better here. 
Already with four minutes to go still in the first quarter 147 total yards for North Carolina Trubisky looking to throw on second down that one is caught by Howard and he's going to walk in touchdown bug Howard there is a penalty flag down back near the line of scrimmage offside defense number 90 the penalty is declined touchdown Carolina obviously takes the play and they take the touchdown. Another phenomenal job by Trubisky working through his progression. He starts looking at him through the eyes, looking left, not there, over the middle, not there. And what about the accurate throw? He hits Bug Howard right between the one and the three, and it shields the throw away from the defender, allows Bug Howard to spin out and score. Extra point is up and good. 96 yard scoring drive after Duke pinned Carolina deep. It did not matter. And in the end, the Tar Heels with their excellent quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, and picking on the freshman quarterback, Mark Gilbert, for the touchdown. It's 14 0. Jim Knowles and the Duke defense, they got some things to figure out. It has been a rough start for them, but a great start for the 17th ranked Tar Heels and their junior quarterback, Mitch Trubisky. 14 0 North Carolina. And they didn't even have the ball first in this game. So they have had two drives very impressively gone down the field. They'll kick it off deep to Sean Wilson and Duke. Near the goal line. Wilson's going to bring it out. A change directions, and Wilson does get to the corner there. Second consecutive good kick return for the Blue Devils. Spence, you're down two touchdowns. Can you stick to the game plan? Well, I think you start wondering again, going back in situations down the stretch, fourth downs and manageable in plus territory. Do you start going for it and stop punting? Yeah, I think you got to take some risks. That looked to me like it was backwards. It won't matter. The pass was handled, and Joseph Ajibi with the nice game. How much better does the Tar Heel defense look under defensive coordinator Gene Chizik when he showed up last year? Two years ago, they were statistics one of the worst defenses in ACC history. They've been so much more sound under Gene Chizik's watch. They're not giving up as many explosive plays. What a difference. Won a national championship as a head coach. Won a national championship as a coordinator at Texas. There's a completion to the tight end into Carolina territory. Eric Schneider. And a nice job manipulating the pocket by Daniel Jones. Standing in there, he feels the rush. He's able to step up. He's got bodies falling around him. And one of the things I love about this freshman, he throws it really well under duress. When he's got bodies and guys hanging off of him, he can still be accurate. And you saw an example of that right there. 16-yard gain and a first down, Duke. Well, that was your point coming in. The scouting report, very accurate. The short and medium throws has not been great throwing downfield. They had a couple big-time chances last week in a close loss against Georgia Tech that they missed where the plays were there. This is where you see it, short to intermediate. He's been very, very good, very accurate. It's, it's the deep shots. They just haven't had those plays. Part of it is they just don't have the dynamic receiver outside to make those types of plays, but a lot of it also does fall on Daniel Jones. He needs to be more accurate when pushing it down the field. Second down at five. Jones with a nice clean pocket and another accurate delivery across the middle. He puts a lot of throws on the body of wide receivers. You don't have to time see guys having to stretch out. And that's oftentimes when DBs can kind of get their hands in and maybe knock it away. But the receiver right here, he has no choice. I mean, he's going to catch this. This is a bullet coming over the middle of the field. <laughs> it's the receiver right in the chest. That was Copenhaver, Davis Copenhaver. They got three good tight ends on this Duke offense. Nice hole on the right side for Sean Wilson. We've seen the tight ends do some damage already, but they're a matchup problem because they're too big for DBs to cover. They're too fast for linebackers to cover, and they line them up all over the field. Offensive coordinator Zach Roper has got a lot of different packages and formations for these tight ends to take advantage of. You're going to see more of that tonight. By the way, it is a little chillier than you might expect. It's been beautiful weather here in Carolina, but 
It is a little chilly tonight. Mitch Trubisky trying to stay warm on the bench as Duke drives it down the field. How about Wilson squirting through what was not a very big hole? Gets Wilson wrestled to the ground, but not before he gets a Duke first down. This is a very good-looking Duke drive here with a lot of balance. We've seen some accurate throws, short to intermediate by Daniel Jones, and some tough running. We talked about 180-pound back. Yeah, that's big boy running right there in between the tackle box, bouncing off of defenders. Gain of nine. Nine play drives so far, 57 yards so far. Will they get the playoff, they will. Last play of the quarter, and they're going to pitch it and perhaps throw the ball. No. Keeping it along the sideline. That's Jonathan Roy. That was a trick play drawn up. He kept it, I think, smartly and got some positive yards. Yeah, heads up because the quarterback, Daniel Jones, he was covered in the end zone. Smart. You don't force it, don't throw a pick. Give yourself an opportunity to score. Well, a first quarter that was largely dominated by Mitch Trubisky and the Carolina offense. But the Blue Devils, the underdogs in this rivalry game, on the doorstep when we come back. Here from Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, a rivalry game. The Tar Heels and the Blue Devils, 14-0 North Carolina. Dave Fleming, Jesse Palmer, Laura Rutledge. Duke, though, has moved the ball. It was a well-played first quarter. Lots of explosion on offense. No accepted penalties on either side. And the Blue Devils, they you figure, I think they got to get in the end zone here. Yeah, and I think one way to do it is running the quarterback, Daniel Jones. This is an area of the field down inside the 10-yard line where they like the zone reads to use the athleticism of their quarterback. They've been an excellent red zone offense because they run the ball extremely well. Something David Cutcliffe has been doing for years here at Duke, running the quarterback particularly in this area of the field. We'll see if the redshirt freshman Daniel Jones can help Duke punch it in on second down. They can get a first down. It's not second and goal. Jones with the play fake, and he will keep it. Jones, touchdown! There it is. And that's what makes them tough to defend. Now that Daniel Jones is running the ball so well. He's so impressive athletically for a guy his size. You want to go back and take a look at this. I think he was maybe looking for an opportunity to cut this back. Check it out again. He's got those long arms. He's able to stretch it across before the knees or elbow touch. Very good play call by offensive coordinator Zach Roper. And an impressive drive. And an answer, Dave, you mentioned that they needed the way their defense is struggling right now to try and see some momentum in this game. They're going to have to take chances, and they're going to have to score seven. And they do right there. So the extra point gets Duke within seven against North Carolina. 14 to seven, just one play into the second quarter. Young senior night in Durham. In the midst of what has been a down year for the Blue Devils, they may well have found a quarterback for the future and for the now. Daniel Jones has been playing well. Duke's going to have to kick the ball back, though, to that powerful Carolina offense. A left-footed kicker, Will Klein. That one's a wobbler, and it's going to go out of bounds. And that's a mistake, a penalty that will give North Carolina good field position. And by the way, look at where the ball is being marched towards. There were two penalties on that kickoff. That is not very good special teams execution by Duke. And Carolina starts without having to return at the 50-yard line. Now, that's inexcusable. So, Trubisky will hand it off. Well defended by Duke. That's Chris Francis, the senior from right here in Durham. Gain of a yard. Yeah, a nice job by the linebackers in the second level. Joe Giles Harris and Ben Humphreys. They're two really good backers for Duke. They're roommates. They play with really good instincts, and they can both run. And that's a positive in this game when you consider the athleticism that Tar, Heel Tar Heels have at running back. Number 44, Joe Giles Harris, who made the tackle there. No freshman in the ACC has more tackles than he does. Francis is going to get it this time running to the right side and this time Francis is from the defensive backfield Corbin McCarthy coming up to make the tackle. Yeah, I love watching him play super aggressive. They like to blitz him. He's a human missile trying to blow people up and he's involved in a lot of blitz packages too and here's an opportunity on third down. You're going to see him on the replay come out of the right side. We talk about all the east west running and the athleticism the Tar Heels have. That's a great open field tackle. Here's a situation where they like to get him going and get this the extra blitz. We saw this on a third down the last drop. See if Duke can generate some pressure here. But they rush four, kind of a delayed blitz. The deep pass from Trubisky to Switzer, and it's incomplete. 
And I said Switzer was Austin Kroll, the intended receiver, and he could not catch it. Uh, it was the second deep shot that Prohl hasn't been able to come up with. And there was a little bit of contact at the end of this, too. Watch the cornerback, Gilbert, the true freshman, kind of grab onto that arm right before the ball got there. I think that's a call that could have been made. But they let a pass interference call go earlier, which I think should have been called against UNC. I like that the referees at least are being consistent. And certainly Prohl wants, wants that P.I. call, doesn't get it. But a good stand by the, uh, the Duke D. And it would have been a good catch, but he definitely had a chance to catch that one. Kind of a line drive punt that's going to be down to right near the five-yard line. Good special teams coverage from North Carolina. Well, a much-needed stop for the Duke defense. Now Daniel Jones and the offense back on the field. Yeah, he's looked really, really good in the short to intermediate throws. It hasn't looked so good in the deep shots. Here was a post throw. It looked like he had his receiver ramming open. They tried to flea flicker. This time definitely had ramming open down the post again. Under through this one. Could have been a PI call. Didn't get it. Because you don't get the explosive plays, it forces this offense to have to go 10, 12, 14 plays to score every drive. That's really, really hard to sustain. And those opportunities continue to arise, and Duke's going to keep taking shots. They should. Just got to be more efficient. A slightly bigger tailback, Joseph Ajibi, is in the backfield here. Duke starting off at the five from the end zone. Jones will have it fall incomplete into double coverage. This is a place on the field that coordinators like to try and take shots. It guarantees one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. Defenses like to load the box and stop the run. I think Jones a little bit disappointed in himself right now. You know, he's had some looks. He's had some one-on-one -on -one opportunities that he hasn't been able to come up with. I think you have to keep taking them, though. If you're Duke, you've got to be aggressive in this game. Second and 10. GB straight ahead, and that's a nice game. Make it third down and three. You got seven yards on second down. So, you know, with him in the game now, you've got a little bit more physical ball carrier running between the tackles, and that complements Daniel Jones in the zone read game. So I don't think you necessarily have to abandon the run here on a third down look. Third and three. Jones in that pocket. That is caught for a first down. Ramming came back to get the ball. First down, Duke. You hit it on the head, Dave. Phenomenal job by Ramming. Coming back to the ball. It's a curl route at the top of the screen, but a lot of receivers would just stop and turn around, and that allows the cornerback to drive on the ball and potentially break it up. But a very veteran move by only a sophomore receiver. He's not that big, 5'10", 165, but doing a nice job creating separation by coming back to his quarterback and making a nice catch first down. So the Blue Devils, a little breathing room. They started at the 5. Now it's first and 10 at their own 20. Jones, that quick hitter, left side, trying to get a block out in front. And a broken tackle, two penalty flags thrown. And Chris Taylor is still going. Outside the 30 to the 35. And they're going to call a face mask on Corey Bell Jr., number 18. Going to add yardage to the play. Duke should have the ball here around midfield. It was obvious. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 26, defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Well, they got the number wrong. You had it right. It was Corey Bell Jr. And that does. That adds yardage to that already nice positive game. And a drive that started inside their own five-yard line. So good balance. Again, we're seeing this Duke offense looks to be getting into a rhythm now. 31 yards in total. And they are just beyond midfield. And GB gets the ball. Turning those legs forward. There wasn't a whole lot of room there. But at the end of the play, it's four yards. I like the pistol formation. Duke loves to run it. And normally, when you line up a running back in the offset position, it gives an, uh, the defense an opportunity to potentially slide. But back here in the pistol, they don't know if he's running this way, that way, or straight ahead. So it's very, very difficult for this D-line to slant to the right or to the left. They kind of are forced to have to play head up. And it's an advantage, I think, for Duke in the running game. And that was Sean Wilson, who stays in as the tailback alongside Jones, second and six. Jones over the top again, and he's finally completed one downfield inside the 10 to the 5 to Chris Taylor. This time they have Taylor in the slot again. You've got a 6'1", 180-pound receiver basically running a go route against press coverage, and a nice job by Jones putting air under the football, allowing his receiver to turn around, 
located on the back shoulder throw. They finally complete an explosive shot. 29 yards to set up first and goal. Duke wants to go quickly here. Last time they were at this part of the field, it was Daniel Jones who ran it in himself. Wilson. And the ball came out in the end zone. The quarterback pounced on it. They're going to say touchdown anyway. And I think they'll give credit to Sean Wilson. Jones was there to recover just in case. In possession of the ball before it came out. Touchdown. That, that was the ruling that he crossed the goal line before it came out. Take a look at this again. It's pretty close. He's got two hands on the football going to the ground. I think he was already past the goal line when the football started coming loose. It certainly came loose before he hit the ground, but I think the football already broke the plane. That's why that touchdown was down. It should be a really good view here. Yeah, and since Jones recovered it, oh, it yeah. was going to be a Duke touchdown anyway, but I think the call was the correct one. <laughs> Extra point coming here. The game has not been real reliable for Duke. That's sort of understating it, but A.J. Reed, two for two on PATs. We've had a 96-yard Carolina drive, and now we've had a 95-yard Duke drive. Yeah, we've got a really good-looking uh, QB duel here. Mr. Trubisky going to get it back. He's been on fire early, and now a little bit more pressure on his shoulders having to answer for Daniel Jones. Really good play calling offensively for offensive coordinator Zach Roper and the Duke deal. It's been impressive so far, and you're right. We've got a good one here in the second quarter. The last kickoff was a disaster for Duke, trying to do a little better this time, and they will. Carolina stopped at the 16-yard line. Anthony Ratliff Williams, such a big game for North Carolina, Jesse, because they are right in the midst of this coastal race. They beat Pitt. They had an impressive win on the road against Miami in the coastal. Virginia Tech has wins against Pitt, Miami, and that head-to-head -head win against Carolina, which is looming so large. Virginia Tech still has to play Georgia Tech and UVA. This game against Duke and another rivalry game for North Carolina. NC State still on the schedule. Yeah, it, for and it's not over yet. I mean, Georgia Tech, tough team to game plan for. Traditionally, Bud Foster's done a great job, but wait and see. And Carolina needs some help. Elijah Hood just running over people tonight. Yeah, he's the complete back. You've seen him run tonight between the tackles and outside, but this guy can pass block and he can also catch the football. And he's going to have NFL scouts drooling because of that. He's playing so fast. He just looks like he's cutting harder. He dishes out punishment. That's a business decision you have to make as a DB if you want to tackle Hood. Carolina will go from the pistol on first down. Trying to answer the back-to-back -back Duke touchdowns. Hood, after shuffling in the formation, Gets stacked up right near the line of scrimmage and driven out of bounds. Yeah, again, you're seeing the speed that Duke has at linebacker and their ability to kind of slow down this east-west rushing attack. Really, really important. There aren't a lot of linebacking groups that I think match up from a speed standpoint with what the Tar Heels like to do. And Duke right now looks pretty good at that level. But the point really is tonight, Carolina has to win to have that opportunity. Kroll with a nice catch for a Carolina first down outside the 45. Yeah, Prohl is really had kind of a, a, a breakout year this season, and I've liked him because he can line up in the slot, but he can also line up outside. He runs really good routes. Watch this in cut and his ability to just pluck the ball out of the air, climb the ladder. Looks a lot like his dad, Ricky Prohl, a great NFL wide receiver. He came into this season with only 27 career catches, already had 31 coming into this game. He's had a great year. Had a much bigger role here in the last few weeks with Novak Hollins out with an injury. Trubisky wide open and off to the races, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Carl Tucker. 54 yards. Everybody on Duke's defense keying on Ryan Switzer. How many times on film this year have they seen Switzer come in motion? And you throw their dangerous slot receiver a bubble screen, well, UNC dials it up. There's Switzer in motion. They're going to fake the bubble screen to him. Everybody on Duke's defense bites on it. That opens up a massive area for the freshman Carl Tucker to run into. He's been another weapon on this offense, too. He's kind of their pass-receiving tight end. Very good athlete and yet another headache that a defensive coordinator like Jim Knowles from Duke and David Cutcliffe got to worry about. Uh, you said it, and you could just see from that replay, the middle linebacker who's played well as a sophomore, Ben Humphreys, just got totally faked out and went the wrong way, and that left Tucker wide open. Trubisky's not going to miss that one, that's for sure.
So Carolina after Duke had scored two straight touchdowns with the pitch and catch Trubisky to Tucker North Carolina back in front. So when the victory bell changes hands the spray paint comes out and the winning team gets to paint the bell and that created a lot of controversy the last time it happened here but. I think they're planning on doing it again tonight if Duke can get the victory and even if Carolina it, it's kind of a long story but they changed the, they temporarily changed no we're not going to spray paint it we're going to permanently paint it and divide it up Carolina blue Duke blue and nobody was happy with no. that so we'll see spray paint players tonight. hated it you are absolutely going to see spray paint tonight and their head coach somewhere may have to pay some more money out of his pocket. That was a big check that uh, Larry Fedora had to write a couple of years ago. A little hesitation move. Sean Wilson is good at this. I mean, he is a very dangerous Sean kick Wilson returner. That's the third positive kick return for Duke in this first. Yeah. He looms large over this game. There's still a long way to go. A little extra pressure from North Carolina. The throw into coverage knocked away incomplete. Intended for Schneider, the tight end. Des Lawrence knocked it away. Yeah, great coverage by Des Lawrence because he's only six foot one. And he's, he's given up six inches to the six seven Eric Schneider outside. Duke kind of snuck him out there at wide receiver. But Des Lawrence, those long arms, he's been doing this all season long. Really good in press coverage. That's clean. And a nice job turning around to locate where the football is. Big time play. You know, I think Carolina, they have one of the best pairs of cover corners. Wilson straight ahead running for a Duke first down. I think it's one of the best tandems in the ACC in the country, and it's amazing that they don't have an interception. It's, you're right, and they like to play press coverage, and it's Des Lawrence and MJ Stewart outside that, that like to get physical, and they disrupt the timing of the opposing quarterback, and they can contest throws. Two receivers have got touchdown passes on this defense coming into tonight. So that's the good. They do want to get one of those INTs. Wilson gaining a lot of yards on the ground. Tripped up short of the first down by Cole Holcomb. But a gain of nine. They are the only team, North Carolina, in college football without an interception as a team. Yeah, which is, which is surprising. And here we're going back to Sean Wilson. We've seen him make some positive plays between the tackles. Now showing you that burst and that speed outside. Really difficult on this UNC defense to play assignment football. Duke's up over 200 yards in the first half. That's a first down and more. Because of the zone read and what Duke likes to do, you've always got to have bodies on defense plugging up the holes inside to worry about the running back. But you better have an answer for Daniel Jones if he decides to keep the football outside as well. You cannot take a playoff. It's like playing option football on offense. Puts a lot of stress on Gene Chizik in a short week to prepare. GB now in at tailback. First down, Duke. Trying to answer that long Carolina touchdown. This is a keeper. Jones is going to run it. Jones kind of slipped through. I thought he was going to take a big hit. He didn't. But a really nice job on defense there with the assignments because they took away the dive inside. They had bodies outside for the quarterback run. And on that play, there was an attachment. Duke had a receiver running down the sidelines. And Des Lawrence, Des Lawrence a cornerback, was able to stay with them. So you're seeing UNC on defense right now. They're very vanilla. We haven't seen a lot of exotic looks. They're just getting lined up where they're supposed to be and staying home and not giving up the explosives. Well, handed off from the pistol. Maybe that's the thinking. Here comes another flag thrown. And just a couple yards thrown from straight behind. Is that against the offensive line again? Personal foul. Continuous hands to the face. Number 17 oh. defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Dewan Drennan, who got called for the unsportsmanlike personal foul. Now, this is a different kind of personal foul, but his second big penalty in this game. Well, it gives Duke an automatic first down. That was going to be third and long, one of their first of the game. You're going to see Drennan here. He's working on the right side against the left tackle. He have his hands in his face yet. I think he slips it right underneath the chin right there. You see him now pushing the face mask sideways, and that's the second big penalty. I, I didn't think the first penalty should have been called on him down by the goal line, but Fedora knows that one was costly. Yeah, very big penalty there. Duke was going in the wrong direction. Now it's first and ten. Another play fake. Misdirection. Jones downfield. Caught. By that second tight end, Daniel Helm, right around the 10, first down Duke. The tight end packages and everything they've done here in the last two games has 
I think, breathe a different life into this offense. And they've been creative, a lot of different types of formations. And number 80, Daniel Helm, he's normally the guy that lines up in the three-point stance, attached to the line of scrimmage. He says a good feel, athletic to climb in the second level and makes a tough catch going to the ground. That was a good throw, too, by the freshman Daniel Jones. First and goal, Duke. Sean Wilson now empties the backfield. They're going to swing it to Wilson. They made that catch, made the first man miss. Inside cut, down to the two. What a nifty move by Wilson. Yeah, and a dangerous guy when you get him out in space like that because he has the ability to make you miss. We talked about how good of a kick returner he is. He's just natural. He has the instinct. They had a big loss losing Jaleigh Duncan, their starting running back, but I've been so impressed watching the junior Sean Wilson and how he stepped in. Another 68 yards on this drive. Duke has now surpassed North Carolina in total yardage in this first half. It was lopsided early. Wilson gets the carry, tried to jump over the top, and he got stuffed. Just short, but he did get stopped short by the middle linebacker Andre Smith. It'll be third and goal. Nice job attacking here by Smith. Anticipating the jump over top, so he meets him. The ball never touched the plane. It didn't look like it. It was close. All the ball has to do, just the tip of the football has to cross. It did. And off Wilson this time. No, it's Jones. He kept it for the touchdown. What a great play fake. The defense went to Sean Wilson, and Jones just walked in untouched. It's hard. It's going to stress this UNC defense with the assignments. And again, the zone read, another wrinkle in the run game that Duke's been getting to more recently here. Nice job on the play fake. Dominique Green, number 26, runs right down the, and, and tackles the running back. Nobody outside. The second zone read that Daniel Jones has now kept. Got a bit of a shootout going here. No kidding. 10 plays, 70 yards, another Duke touchdown. Extra point is off the upright and good. So he banked it in with basketball season about to start here in Durham. Yeah, home court bounce. And remember what Laura told us at the top. It's a long, long way <laughs> to the visitors' locker room. And it takes away a little time if you're going to have meetings and make some adjustments and do some game planning. It takes you a while to get there. In fact, they're running off the field. They're going to they're gonna try to sprint to the locker room or jog at least to try to get there a little quicker. 21-21, that's the halftime score. We'll hear from Coach Fedora in a moment, but first to the studio with Adnan, Danny, and Joey. Thanks. Coach, how did slowing down the tempo offensively affect the final moments of this first half? The, uh, you know, what we needed, we, it, it, we didn't give us any time to do anything with us, and we weren't being consistent on offense, especially in the last couple series. What can you say about the way your defense has handled Daniel Jones and the run game for them? I wouldn't say we've done very well against the run game to this point. We've got to get that corrected. Thank you. You bet. It's the time for football, too, when everyone throughout the whole country is looking forward to some of the season's biggest games, like the annual Duke-North Carolina game. And before every big game, there is always a midnight rally. Every year, 50,000 people from every part of the U.S gather for Tobacco Land's Game of Games. Tobacco Land's Game of Games. Yeah, they've been playing this rivalry since the time the broadcasters spoke like that. You're watching the <laughs> ACC on ESPN. I love that old stuff. That's pretty cool. And we've had a heck of a game. A little more scoring here than in, what was that, 1938? Yeah. 21-21, that's the score as we get ready to start the second half and Wallace Wade, two offenses, two quarterbacks playing at the Yeah, we got level. a little bit of a quarterback duel going on here in the ACC Coast. Well, Mitch Trubisky's look great in the red zone, throwing that touchdown to Thomas Jackson. Comes back and finds Buck Howard, the accurate throws. We've seen great anticipation getting through his progressions here. A long touchdown to Carl Tucker and Trubisky, 15-21 right now with three touchdowns. He hasn't turned it over. Meanwhile, the freshman Daniel Jones, he's made some plays throwing the football. We've seen him also hurt North Carolina with his leg, especially down in the red zone, using that zone read. It's been a bigger part of this offense here in recent weeks. And right now, they've got a lot of balance. They've been able to stay on the field, convert third downs. Just kind of get a, get a feel right now. Which of these two defenses can get a stop? Which of these two defenses can take the football away and steal a possession? No turnovers yet. That's going to be a big key for both of these offenses ball security here in the second half. Let's just say this for a game where one team, Duke, 0-5 in ACC play, and one team, Carolina, 5-1. This matchup has not felt nearly that lopsided. Duke 
Duke's offense has really been impressive. The Duke defense will have to be on the field at the start of the second half. It is T.J. Logan to return the kickoff. A penalty flag is thrown. Logan with a nice return, but I would imagine some of this is coming back. And while we have a moment, let's go downstairs, or a few moments ago at least, downstairs with David Cutcliffe, Laura Rutledge. Thanks. Coach, you wanted your defense to contest every route. How do you think they handled Trubisky? We've done that well, but when we've done it, we've let him hold the ball a little bit. You know, they're going to make completions, but we have done a great job of trying to contest it early, trying to get to the speed of the game. They made some catches that we probably could have prevented. You just can't give up big plays. We make them snap the ball multiple times. Good things are going to happen for Duke. Just watch. No big plays. Make them snap the football. Good things will happen for Duke. Thank you, Coach. Good things that Laura to happen for this UNC offense. They got to get back to handing the football off to number 34, Elijah Hood. He only has six carries in this game so far. He needs more touches. Yeah. They come straight through the screen set up, and Hood has a lot of room in front. Elijah Hood out to midfield, a pass midfield. What a great call by Carolina. And Carolina anticipated the blitz, and what a play call against that. You're going to let all these rushers just run right by you. You're going to sneak out Hood here on the screen. It's a perfect job by Trubisky holding it to the last second. And Hood will get the carry this time after the 31-yard gain on the screen play. But Hood getting more touches. Yep. We've seen more carries. We've seen them throw him the football. You see we right there after an explosive play North Carolina getting right back up to the line of scrimmage and trying to go fast And I think they got to continue to do that here in the second half crank up the tempo That's when they've had their most success and you watch him come out of the game here And it does make you wonder whether maybe there's a little bit of a conditioning issue with Elijah Hood because he is healthy He's been so effective and He hasn't been staying on the field for a lot of plays after the play fake Trubisky's in trouble and he'll dump it short to Logan. The defense starts to come up, and they'll shove Logan out of bounds, but he gets the first down. That was good individual effort on both ends, quarterback and running back. Yeah, it was a better job in pass rush by Duke that time, just with their front four alone. But again, you know, Trubisky and his legs, and not just, you know, running the ball and design runs, but buying time and finding an outlet throw. Carolina is trying to go more up-tempo with the play fake. Trubisky. That one is complete. The immediate hit close to the first down. That's Jordan Cunningham with the catch. And let's go to Laura. Dave, you mentioned Elijah Hood's conditioning. He's been struggling on the sideline throughout this game, trying to take deep breaths, trying to stay hydrated. You can tell that he's very tired. They're trying to manage that. I mean, it's had an impact in this game. T.J. Logan, who's done some good things when he's been in there. But when Hood's on the field, it's a different Carolina offense. Yeah, it is, but he hasn't been able to play in long stretches at a time this season because of those injuries. And we talked about him being 60% from the Georgia game week one up until Georgia Tech, their last time out. And you just can't replicate, and duplicate that in practice. And the conditioning right now may be a little bit of a factor. After the injury timeout, Switzer will pitch it back. And Duke's defense was there. What a read and what a play. Dominic McDonald, number 51, doing a great job staying home and anticipating the reverse. We've seen jet sweeps to Ryan Switzer all night and set up a touchdown pass earlier in this game and looking for a little trickeration, trying to get the fast flow of Dukes on defense. But what a big time play in the backfield, putting North Carolina right now on the fringe of field goal range. Yeah, in this part of the field, that's huge. Third and 20. He almost jumped. Duke got to do a blitz look and backed up out of it. We'll see what they do. Play clock under five. They do bring some pressure. That throw and the catch by Kroll who made one man miss, but then Yang tackled inside the 20, stopped well short of the first down. You would figure to set up a field goal yeah, drive. TJ Logan plays on third down because of this right here. Watch him come over and just get enough of Joe Giles Harris on the blitz to allow Trubisky to get that ball off. If you're going to stay on the field on offense third downs, you better be A, good at catching the ball, but most importantly, you better be good at pass protection, understanding who you need to block. I think that's the second, maybe third time in this game where he's picked up pressure very nicely. A 36-yard try for Nick Weiler, the senior place kicker. And the kick is on its way, and good. Weiler for three points to put Carolina ahead. 6-10 to go, third quarter, 24-21, Tar Heels.
Carolina doesn't want to look at that Duke and logo. I'll tell you, I, I was here two years ago when North Carolina won this game. I, I promise you, whoever wins this game, the players will rush over to that thing when the game is over, and I fully expect there to be spray paint involved. Nobody, it was sort of an idea in good spirit to paint half Carolina, half Duke. There's nobody who was happy with that. So the spray paint is coming out. We know that at the end of this game, one way or the other. Making some adjustments to the call with plenty of time. Now throwing, taking one of those chances, and a perfect pass caught by Ramming. First down and much more. And it's Daniel Jones's football IQ that allows this to happen because he saw the blitz coming. He changed the protection right there at the line of scrimmage. Make sure the pressure's going to be picked up. So you see the running back. They're going to all work that side. And just give them enough time to take this shot. I love this. Stay aggressive. Keep taking these shots. You're going to make big four big plays. TJ Ramming there coming up with the go. His fifth catch. He's got 65 yards. And another handoff. They are stubborn with the run game, and that's why. They feel like they can even... When there's not a whole lot of room there, they've got the running backs to get that positive yeah, yard. And it's an offensive line, Dave, that's a better run blocking O line than a pass protecting O line. They're not very big. They only average 290 pounds across the board. So they're not maulers. They're not pushing and moving people, but they're smart. They get hats on hats. They work double teams and get into the second level. And these zone blocking schemes, they do a good job. They have almost 130 rush yards so far tonight. Jones keeping it. First down and more. There goes Jones inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, Duke. And again, just Jones in his ability to make people miss by not handing off to Wilson, the running back. Wilson essentially becomes a lead blocker here. Watch this. That was a GB in front of him, 23, just getting a hat on a body. There's Jones falling forward. Now back inside the 10, around the 10-yard line. It's where these quarterback zone runs. This has been really good for them the last couple weeks, and certainly tonight. And it was a great point by you, because Wilson, that, that, that lead block was the key to the whole play. They will give it to Wilson this time. Wilson stuffed. Got a yard. And we talked about how Duke's defense had to be great in the red zone earlier. North Carolina's defense hasn't been very good in this end of the field here tonight. Three trips inside the 20-yard line. The Tar Heels have given up three touchdowns. I think the zone reads obviously been a big issue for Gene Chizik and this defense playing sound assignment football, making sure everybody's covered and all the gaps are plugged up. There is no such thing for Duke as an automatic field goal. Their field goal kicking has been extremely poor this year. So that, it makes it even more important for them to get it in the end zone, even this close. The sprint out, Jones looking to run. Jones will go down, spun down at about the three. He's their best short yardage runner because he's their biggest running back. At 6'5", 210 pounds. Remember, Sean Wilson, 180 pounds. A GB's 215 to 5'9". I think you go for it here. You go for it here, you don't get it. You go for it again. And if I'm Cutcliffe, I'm letting Daniel Jones, I think, keep it. I, I think so, too. Now, when, when no field goal is automatic, why not? You're at the two. They gave him a pretty good spot, third and goal. Daniel Jones, and he faked the run, threw it right into coverage. It's caught with a penalty flag. Davis Copenhaver, touchdown. Well, that was nifty, and we'll see what the flag is. Pass interference, defense number 26. Penalty be declined, touchdown. It's a jump pass, but at 6'5", he really doesn't have to leave the ground <laughs> because he's tall enough to get it over. And because of the success they have when the quarterback runs down there by the goal line, he's setting up play action by himself. It's a fake QB draw. It sucks up all the linebackers, and there's the throw. Dangerous throw. A little bit behind the tight end, but Copenhaver, nice job. The tight end has been a big part of the passing game. Huge. Extra point is good. And for the first time in this game, the Blue Devils have gone ahead. Big underdogs in this rivalry, but it's 28-24 Duke here in the third quarter. And Daniel Jones, the freshman quarterback, and I think Jesse is fair to say he's not playing like a freshman anymore. No, he's going to be a good one for years to come here in the ACC. Blue Devils, who lead for the first time now, will kick it off. The left-footed 
Kickoff specialist Will Klein. Right around the goal line, DJ Logan will bring it out. Logan slips through and breaks another tackle. Here goes TJ Logan with the kicker to beat. He gets to midfield and stays in bounds. Finally tackled at the 25. What a return from Logan who spent. Special teams were going to play a huge factor in this game. You just knew it. It's been a big key for Duke. Winning games this year and losing them. We talked about the dangerous TJ Logan. Three career return scores. His ability to break tackles, poor job and coverage by Duke. The ability to get to the perimeter outside, great hustle and effort by the kickoff specialist Will Klein to try to take away the angle. What a, what a, you know, changes field position and flips the field for North Carolina. And three, four missed tackles without that effort from the kicker, Klein. Maybe he goes all the way for what would have been his fourth career kickoff return for a touchdown as it stands Tar Heels trailing for the first time but they start at the Blue Devils 25 Trubisky deflected and knocked away incomplete trying to fit it into Bug Howard. Yeah, Brian Fields had a really good game contesting throws remember he broke up that what looked like a touchdown pass to Austin Prohl in the first quarter he's contesting everything and against this offense with so many run pass options Every play, you've got to be in press coverage and, and chasing this receiver and playing physically. You can't take any plays off. Fields has looked really good. That throw all the way across the field to Pro, who gets sort of wrestled out of bounds after a gain of five. Yeah, good tackle by Mark Gilbert. He's the guy that got called for the pass interference. He's a young, true freshman. I think this coaching staff thinks has the best NFL potential of anybody in the secondary, certainly of their young players. Here's a big third down. He's going to have to be good out there against Pearl, who's very crafty, and I think the best route runner North Carolina has. So third and 11, here's another one of those spots where Carolina take an extra time. Does that give the Blue Devils the chance to set up the pressure? At least showing that they're backing off. They'll rush four. Trubisky throws. It is caught by Switzer, but stopped well short. He had to come back for the football, and he's... Probably four yards short of the first down. There's a situation now. Now Larry Fedora is the one that has to start thinking about going for it on fourth downs because all of a sudden his defense is having issues stopping Duke. He's got a kicker who's got a huge leg. and There's a lot of football left in this game. So they're going to take the points, but how does this become a shootout? You know, I think you pay off the kick return. I like the call because you got the great kickoff return from TJ Logan. Take advantage of the field position and give Wilder an opportunity to knock it through the uprights. So 37 yard try to cut the lead to one. The kick is good. Nick Weiler's had a solid night. So with 35 seconds left to go here in quarter number three, it is 28 27. Yeah, I, uh, a no more normal year. You'd figure Iowa would have a pretty good shot at home with that great home field advantage, but this does not feel like that year. Sean Wilson with a penalty flag thrown across the 30 yard line. A little swing pass. That, it was a no contest. Penn State of Michigan. And Michigan just destroyed the Nittany Lions. If they played right now, I think it would be a closer game, a better game. Well, it's interesting we talk about the college football playoff and the rankings and where they stand right now. Michigan in the three spot. They still have some big games looming potentially themselves. Obviously, Ohio State coming up. They may have to play Wisconsin again. The Big Ten title game. That could be two teams currently ranked in the top seven to help their strength of schedule. Maybe slide up a spot as we go down the stretch. End of the third quarter here tonight in Durham. And what more could you ask for? We got a rivalry game with a lot on the line, especially for Carolina. A one-point game, all kinds of good offense. And in the third quarter, we even saw some good defense from the Blue Devils. That set up the long pass play to TJ Ramming. And then the redshirt freshman Daniel Jones, who's just been so impressive. How'd he fit that one in there? Touchdown Blue Devils. They lead by one. Back in Durham, and Jesse, you've talked a lot about Daniel Jones, the freshman quarterback, the success he's had in these kind of plays. Yeah, he's really fast for a guy that's six foot five. He's more shifty than defenses expect. And they're able to use that ability of his down in the red zone. They've been doing it the last couple of weeks. It's really paid off. He had two rushing touchdowns in this game. And it was the running ability that set up that play action jump pass touchdown on their last possession. Already 10 carries in the game for Jones, and he should carry it more here in the fourth quarter. 
Nice forward lean of GB on second and six. I think he kept his feet all the way to get the first down. And I think if you're Duke with a one-point lead, now you think about slowing down the tempo. You're having success running the ball. You've got the lead. You don't want to give the ball back to Trubisky too many more times here. This has been a team that's been fighting in the fourth quarter. They've come up on the short end here the last couple weeks. I think you slow it down, though, and you try to be physical running the football between your running backs and your quarterback. It hasn't been total keep away, but they have dominated time of possession. That's been a part of this for Duke. That time Carolina played the run very well, gain of a yard. You know, the run defense had been the issue last year, certainly, for North Carolina. Remember they gave up, what was it, over like 500, 600 yards against Clemson? 700-something yards against Baylor in the bowl game? Now, this is a time right now they need this front seven to hunker down and lock down for Larry Fedora, get the ball back for their explosive offense. You know Fedora's feeling it. Right, there's a lot on the line for North Carolina. 17th ranked team of the country, feeling like they still have a good chance to play in that ACC championship. Big hit, Andre Smith. Yeah, Jeremiah Clark made that play. One is one-on-one -on -one up front, a defensive tackle. Now setting up the third and long situation. They've got to keep... Daniel Jones in the pocket. He's been able to escape and hurt them. If they're not going to blitz, that's fine. But if you're sending four guys, you've got to build a fence around Daniel Jones, not let him get outside and hurt you with his legs. Yeah, those have been a lot of the big plays tonight in this kind of spot. Third and seven for Duke. Under five and a half to go. Jones. With a lot of time across the middle, first down, Ramming came free, and Jones found him. Ramming thought he never went down. Really good job on the patience and the route by Ramming, because he kind of just fakes a little hitch. Watch this. Little hitch, stop, delay. The corner thinks the ball's going behind him. This little double move underneath by Ramming, who apparently didn't think he was down. <laughs> he wanted to keep going. A 12-yard catch, another first down. I mean, Duke, the clock is moving. Just churning away Jones, keeper Jones, tackled. You, know, you got to think about now Jones, freshman quarterback, and, and just ball carriers in general for Duke, stay in bounds. Every second is precious. You do not want to give the football back to that guy we just saw on the bench. He might be the first quarterback taken in next year's NFL draft, and he's been extremely clutch late in games this year. Think about their game against Pitt. Against Florida State. Do not want him getting the ball back. Two weeks ago, 254 rush yards for Duke. Last week against Virginia Tech, 227. Tonight they've got 239 on the ground. They will swing it out to Ramming, who does go out of bounds, knocked out of bounds after a fairly short game. Can't do it. It's a run pass option, and it's up on Daniel Jones if he doesn't want to hand it off and throw it. I think Ramming knows he made a bit of a critical error right there. The biggest thing for Duke now, you're right, that's a mistake. But if you get the first down, 4.15 to go. Uh, the other thing about Duke, uh, this is this counts as a third and short, five for five in these downs in this game. Now the clock does start. You don't want to be too conservative either. They got Wilson as the tailback in the pistol on third and three. Ramming in motion. They will fake it. Jones swings it out to Ramming, trying to turn it up. Field got away and gets the first down. What a move. That is a huge play in this game. And he got away from MJ Stewart. And a nice design because Jonathan Lloyd, the, the slot receiver, he's blocking downfield, but it's illegal because the throw doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. We've seen them on a third down here trying to hide Ramming on motion underneath. And all because of the success they've had in the running game. It's opened up so many big plays in the passing game for Duke on the perimeter. They're down to three and a half minutes to go. When you start using and burning timeouts now, if you're Fedora, we talked about that. I think you, you have to be considering it right now. They've got all three of them. First and ten, Duke. Snap it with four on the play clock. And give it to Wilson, who got a yard. Another interesting question now, if you're if you're David Cutcliffe, you know, this is a one-point game. A field goal obviously makes it four, and North Carolina then needs a touchdown to win. We talked about the issues they've had kicking. What yard line do you have to get to if you're David Cutcliffe to feel comfortable 
to give the true freshman A.J. Reed an opportunity. Second and eight for Duke. Jones carrying the ball. Jones, the freshman, trying to protect the ball. Gets down to the 30. Carolina is not using their timeout, so the clock is moving third down. And yeah, protect the ball. Interesting thing you said that. They had 21 giveaways coming into this game. Just ranked 122nd of 128 teams in the country tonight. Very good with ball security. They've given themselves an opportunity, and what a drive. Three different drives that started from inside their own five-yard line. Chewing up clock, efficient on third down. I expect this to be on the ground or be a very safe conservative throw. Third and six for Duke, leading by a point. Two minutes plus to go. And did they get it snapped? They did, just barely. Jones pressured. Jones will be sacked. And now Carolina does call a timeout. And who knows what David Cutcliffe wants to do oh, here. You're going for it. We talked about we talked about the kicking situation, the difficulty they've had. This is a bomb from about 34 yard line. So you're going to go. Now you've got to think of a play. These are hard to dial up. But what an interesting decision if you're David Cutcliffe. Here. Yeah, I don't know if I'd try it. It'd be 51, 52 yards. Last week he had a field goal blocked in return for a touchdown that cost you the game. You know, and, and also Duke doesn't really have, we talked about the lack of dynamic playmakers outside in the perimeter of the field. Remember Anthony Nash, who had a collarbone injury against Louisville. He was that six foot five, 200 pound guy with long arms that maybe jump over somebody. Don't have him on the field right now. So Duke's gonna go. <laughs> what a decision by Cutler. Fun. It's fourth and ten. Game on the line in this rivalry. Daniel Jones is going to pooch punt. So they use the starting quarterback to do it, and this one will take a Duke bounce. So if you're going to punt, this worked out well for the Blue Devils. And now they're going to wait, let a few extra seconds tick off. 151 on the clock. Carolina gets the ball at their six. And this is what Larry Fedora wants. This is what Mitch Trubisky wants as a quarterback. This is what you dream about when you're a kid. Late in games, two-minute situations with an opportunity to win. And I'm going to remind you again, you go back to the pit game. Florida State game. How good was Mitch Trubisky late in those games? He was automatic. He's got an opportunity to show that here again. And complete opposite from Duke. You got the field goal kicker with the big leg to where once you get across midfield, you can start thinking about a game winning field goal. And two timeouts in your back pocket. For this up tempo offense, a minute 51 seconds. That's a lot of time. So here we go. Trubisky from the end zone. We'll throw it short. The pass is caught by the tight end with nowhere to go. That's the opposite now mindset for North Carolina. Duke needed to stay in bounds. North Carolina wants to get out and try and save as much time as possible. Brandon Fritz got shoved out. Corbin McCarthy was there. He's had a big game for the Blue Devils. And Duke's defense cannot let any of these wideouts from North Carolina get behind them. They've got to play big umbrella coverage and keep the football in front. Under two minutes, that clock stopping with the out-of-bounds play. So Carolina can take their time. It's second and 10. Duke showing some pressure here, and the pressure comes. Trubisky gets rid of it, and Hood will drag a tackler out to the 10, but gets tackled inbounds. Carolina's got to hurry. Yeah, and I think if you're Trubisky, you might be looking for Mark Gilbert, the true freshman cornerback, number 28, in his first start for Duke. Lined up against Austin Prohl, who's an excellent possession type guy. Way down here at the bottom of the screen. And Carolina's got to make sure they get the first down before they dream a little bigger. Trubisky looking to run. What a move. He does get the first down and it gets out of bounds. So that will stop the clock, not just on the first down placement, but stop it until Carolina snaps the ball. That's huge. Yeah, and Carolina is not substituting right now. They're leaving their same personnel on the field. They obviously, they want to go as fast as possible at the line of scrimmage. If you're thinking about that career-long field goal yardage for Nick Weiler, you would have to get to the 37 of Duke on the other side of the field to get there. 1-11 to go. First down, Carolina. Trubisky all kinds of time here come the flags and it's intercepted thrown right to the defense Alonzo Saxton it's going to be a holding penalty 
a number 52 Tommy Hatton, I think. This interception's gonna stand. Holding number 52 on the offense. Then it'll be declined. First down. Wow. And that's the play that could decide it and maybe could end the hopes of an ACC championship for Carolina. A minute, two to go. The final minute right after this. And after the interception, Duke, and they can't just simply take a knee. Jones needs to let some clock wind, so that's the way to do it. You sprint out, take some extra seconds off. Carolina's got the two timeouts, and they will use one with 55 seconds left. That's good coaching by David Cutcliffe and Duke. Blue Devils have the one-point lead, one more timeout to go. You do that two more times, and you win the game. Yeah, and I, I think you have to give Duke's defense a ton of credit in this one, slowing down Mitch Trubisky in this explosive North Carolina offense. Yeah. You talk about this being a 3-6, and six, now 4-6 and six team. Good team without a great record. It's going to be tough. Got to go at Pitt, at Miami. This is an opportunity for David Cutcliffe to continue this bowl run, this incredible bowl run that he's been on at Duke. So let's see if Jones does the same thing in the opposite way he does. Those extra seconds stay on his feet. He did take a hit, and he's losing yardage. Carolina will call that final timeout, but now you're down to 48 seconds, so you've accomplished what you needed to. If you take a knee, it happens so fast, maybe there's a little time left on the clock and you got to punt it away or do something like that. This is the way you milk those final seconds. And again, I think you have to give David Cutcliffe and Duke so much credit for the tumultuous season that they've been through, right? Keep talking about the injuries and losing three senior captains for the season. But this team has never quit. David Cutcliffe does a great job getting them motivated each and every week. They're so well coached. I mean, the play calling tonight, the execution, the fundamentals, it's fun to watch. Seconds, take the knee, and now start to celebrate. And go find the bell. And that's where they're headed. Look at the players sprint across the field, headed for the bell. I mean, that is pretty cool. What a win for the Duke Blue Devils. In a season of close calls and near misses. They got the victory bell. And the students will join the celebration too. Not officially, but almost certainly, those championship hopes for Carolina are gone. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Thanks. Coach, you said this team was better than their record. How did they prove it tonight? Well, we played good in all three phases. Our defense made it harder for them the second half. Our offense was very key throughout the ball game. We're a good football team. We're going to work harder to have a good record before this is over with. What did you think when you saw Alonzo Saxton's interception? I smiled deep down in my heart. Very proud. All of our guys have worked so hard. And this is important to them, as you might imagine, Tobacco Road. But they deserve this opportunity tonight. Proud of them. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all. And Coach Cutcliffe, Jesse mentioned that defense. They gave up six points to North Carolina after halftime. That's pretty impressive. And they get the win in the rivalry game. The victory bell is ringing here in Durham, 28-27. That's the final score for Jesse Palmer, for Laura Rutledge, Dave Fleming saying so long. Fun night. Sports Center is next.